Hello everybody! How y'all doing today and welcome back. Um, this is another episode of Burgers and Fries Game Talk with a Shake podcast. We're on episode 4 here and I'm here with two other people. My co-host Grimondless was unable to join tonight because of some I- I- internet problems he's having. But he, he, he he's they're getting fixed right now but he didn't really get fixed in time. So I'm here with, with, with two other people who were in the uh, previous episode. Joining me is, is Say Who You Are. Hi, I'm Sadat. Hello, Sadat, and also... I'm Link, and we were both in the previous episode. Yep, it's good to have you all back here today. This is going to be kind of a follow-up to episode 3, as we're going to talk about some more video game consoles here. We're going to talk about the, about the PlayStation 2, the Nintendo GameCube, and the Xbox. And I myself have, have owned all three of the consoles. I rank them from 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 first place being the PlayStation 2, Second place the GameCube and third place the Xbox. And hey, how do you put the GameCube at second place? I I know it's a dad. It's just I I was just the PlayStation Two. I was more of a more of a PlayStation guy, so that's why it becomes first. And you traitor! <laughs> I always was a GameCube guy myself. Yeah, I was just that the GameCube on Moment was the best Nintendo console ever made. In my opinion, it was the best Nintendo console. It was my favorite Nintendo console of all time. But, like, I'll talk about that a little bit later. I want to talk about the PlayStation 2 first. That was the first next-gen console that came out. And I remember, like, like when they were coming out, people were having a lot of trouble finding the consoles. They were, like, like having trouble everywhere to find them. Me still believing in Santa Claus at the time I was, I was, I was 12 years old. I was asking my dad, is Santa having a hard time finding them, too? And he goes, yes, even Santa is. You can find the games, but you can't find the consoles. And on Christmas Eve, right after... All our all our guests left because we were having Christmas Eve with my dad's side of the family. On um, Christmas Eve, they called me all this dude on Christmas Day. We had her stay with my mom's side, and they're all over at, over at our house for for Christmas Eve. And like a, the rule was was when we were going on Christmas Eve, we, we we were able to open up some gifts that like family friends gave us and stuff. And the first thing we opened up was the PlayStation Two, and we and we were like, holy cow, PlayStation Two! And it turns out out a family friend got it like. Was able to find it like like near where she was where she was was like having college classes at and so though she'd been a family friendly friend of ours she gave us gave us it and the games we got for it were Tekken Tag Tournament Smuggler's Run Time Splitters Summoner and I'm trying trying to think think what 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 other game game we had there um try just trying to kind of draw a play because like we we did get 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 quite a few games for it when it came out like we had like about four or five of them when it came out but just like um I just remember like like being having a blast like seeing like oh wow the graphics look so cool look look at the graphics the graphics look so cool at the time seeing that that opening cutscene in the Tekken Tag Tournament was like holy cow look at the graphics and seeing how better character models better graphics and all that stuff it was like nice this looks amazing <clears throat> and. I was I, I was I was just blown away by it because it looked looked so cool and of course with like Smuggler's Run it was like this car mission based game which I have reviewed on my channel along with along with Tekken Tag Tournament and Summoner and and stuff so feel feel free to like check those with those 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 reviews out when you can and I just 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 remember like seeing being like it the controls felt smoother and like um it was just a lot of fun there and knowing that like you 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 could play backwards compatibility. It, for PlayStation One games too, which is really fascinating to me, and it was the first, it was the first video game console that told be able to play DVD ROMs, uh, DVD movies in a game system, and that was their, their cutting edge for its time as well. And I was like, blown away by it, and just just being in awe, cause like I got a, I got a lot of games for the for the PlayStation Two, a lot of them. I remember getting, of course, I got the Tekken games, I got like um, I got the Simpsons games, I got games like um, the are some Army Men games were on there, like like. And Crash Bandicoot games, and Jack and Daxter games, Sly Cooper games, and of course Ratchet and Clank. I considered Ratchet and Clank the current mascot of Sony, cause Ratchet's awesome. He's still badass, in my opinion. And like, um, it was. I thought it was really cool to 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 like um ha- have this um new mascot and everything. And I was, and I was just just blown away by it. And like, and of course. It it actually mastered the DualShock analog controls because like more games on the PS2 
did dual shock and analog controls and using the D-pad and spin and stuff and of course SSX snowboarding that was the other game I forgot to mention SSX snowboarding which introduced me to one of my favorite video game characters of all time Elise Riggs who's from Canada and those it was just fun times times for sure I had great times now does anybody have anyone else have to talk about the PlayStation 2 at all? I've never had much experience with the PS2. The only game I can really ever remember playing, I think, was Spyro 2, which was for the PS2. Um, Spyro 2 Ripples Rage. Spyro 2, Spyro 2 Ripples Rage was on the PS1. I think you mean either Spyro oh. and, and a Dragonfly or Spyro Hero's Tale or the Legend of Spyro games or so like that. You're probably talking about one of those. Yeah. Which we all know about. Um, we all know about End of the Dragonfly was so bad. It's so bad they can be actually beaten five minutes. If there's a glitch in the, there's a glitch in the uh, in the game where you can beat the game in five minutes. Which I will review Spyro End of the Dragonfly and Spyro Heroes Tale in the fu- tale coming up in the future. So be on the lookout for that because I have nothing but hatred for those games. And I guess I guess my friend was playing it with the backwards compatibility thingy then yes it was and let me play you know you know hero's tale is one of those games that either you love it or you hate it and the ah. dragonfly though oh everybody hates that yeah especially <laughs> because you, you, you can expose the game's crappiness with the glitch that you can beat the game five minutes or so which cat icarus did Yep, which I, I, I'm a fan of that guy, Catacris, he was actually one of my inspirations for, for game reviews, actually, so credit go, goes to you, Catacris, but, like, just can't believe how bad that was, but if but if it weren't for the PlayStation 2, we wouldn't have gotten those Spy Hunter games, like Spy Hunter, uh, Spy Hunter 2, Spy Hunter Nowhere to Run, we wouldn't have gotten those games, because the original Spy Hunter, well, the original 3D version of Spy Hunter was first on the PlayStation 2, and, of course, there was also some samurai games like Anamusha Warlords, one of my favorite games of all time. And there was Anamusha 2, Samurai's Destiny, and Anamusha 3, Demon, Demon Siege, and Anamusha Dawn of Dreams. Anamusha Warlords was awesome, and it was very cool to have the Japanese audio in it. But I didn't like how um, Samurai's Destiny and Demon Siege did not have Japanese audio in them. This game just plays in ancient Japan, and we're supposed and you don't include the Japanese audio, what's, what's, what, what's up with that? And I guess I know Demon Siege, like, it takes place in modern-day France and, and ancient Japan, stuff like that, but it would have been nice if that was, if, if they had the option, though, is what I mean. I don't think the youngins in our country would appreciate if we had a Japanese option, so let's keep it English here, people. Well, I mean, like, just, I'm not, I'm not trying, to, trying to bash him one or anything, it's just like, it's just that if it takes I'm just place, making oh. fun of the company. Oh yeah, and of course I had Street Fighter EX3, but me being not a fan, not, not, not a big fan of Street Fighter, I didn't really like it that much. I was never a big fan of Street Fighter EX, Street Fighter, and Street Fighter EX3 did not change my mind at all. I mean, of course, like, just, it just, I just couldn't get into it. I, I tried. I mean, I, I really tried, but just, the Capcom fighting games just, just never interested me. But, um, Link, you haven't really talked much, but what do you, what do you have to say about the PlayStation 2? <laughs> Um, the only real memories I have of the PlayStation 2 involve, uh... So, I I remember back in the PlayStation video, I mentioned how Spyro was the first franchise I really got into. Yeah. But, during the PlayStation 2 era, I didn't really have a lot of games that I remembered playing. The, the only one I really remember playing all that much was Jack and Daxter 1. Which, a lot of people's introduction to Naughty Dog was Crash Bandicoot. I only really played the second game and ended up not really getting into that. Jack and Daxter was the Naughty Dog game that I grew up with, personally. Yeah, Jack and Daxter was, was awesome. It, it, it was definitely had that kitty, had that, that kitty but, but mature feel at the same time and stuff. Because, like, I was actually at least surprised because... I'm, this is going to sound so weird here, but I actually... Jack and Dexter seemed like a game that did not have voice acting in it because of the way the characters were and how the story stood up. I actually it felt, thought it was going to be a game that wouldn't have any voice acting in it, but I was wrong there. But like, um, Jack 2 and Jack 3, all three of them masterpieces. I didn't really, really care for Dexter on the PSP or that Jack and Dexter, the Lost Legacy, whatever it is with the PS2. That game sucked ass. Fun fact, the love interest voice in Jack 1 and Jack 2 is the same voice actress as Palmon. And uh, in later games, it would be a certain voice actor that all of us are familiar with. 
Are you talking about Daxter's love interest or Jack's love interest? No, no Jack's love interest. Oh, oh, um, Kira. yeah, Kira, because like, because Dax, because Daxter's love interest was was Tess and stuff. It's just that spoiler. Yeah. I don't mean to spoil the spoilers here, but like, it's I like what happens at at the end with 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 Tess and Daxter at the end of Jack Three. I just that's all I'm gonna yeah, say and, there. And Daxter earned that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, um, in 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 every game after Jack Two, Kara's voiced by Tara Strong. Tara Strong, that the actress have voiced the Bubbles and Power of Girls, and uh, who also voiced Dill and Rug Till Pickles and Rugrats, and also voiced Timmy Turner and the Fairly Odd Parents. She's a Canadian American actress, and she's one of the most popular ones out there. And uh, I could also add Raven from Teen Titans, Twilight Sparkle from French Is Magic. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. There's a bunch of characters that she's voiced. Like, holy shit! Yeah, she's voiced. She voiced a lot of them. A voice that voiced a ton of characters. She's very popular. I think. I think she had. I mean, if one, and I think one of her first acting roles was Bubbles and for Power of Girls and stuff. I could be wrong though, because like I, I just could. I just I could be wrong. That's what I mean. But if I'm wrong, then hey, I accept the fact that I'm wrong. I think I remember. So, I think I remember reading, what, hearing somewhere that she uh, she had a Hello Kitty voice role. I never seen Hello Kitty. I I know nothing about it. My friend Hello, <laughs> April. Hello Kitty. My friend April would know about that. She has a Hello, Hello she, she has a Hello Kitty toaster that she puts but you put toast in it it makes Hello Kitty's face on the toaster. It's actually pretty cool. Huh. Yeah, I remember seeing she goes, Look everybody, it's Hello Kitty toast. I get whoa, this is so cool. <laughs> Hello Kitty is definitely a lot more popular than <clears throat> I initially anticipated. Like it is really like, top five popular, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, but i never seen Hello Kitty. I know nothing about it, so I'm the wrong person person to, to talk about there when it comes to Hello Kitty. <laughs> but, like, um... But it also came to Kindle Pitch 2, like I mentioned, we had, like, Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is, is one of my favorite video game franchises of all time. I love the first Ratchet and Clank in the best. It is, it is awesome. I said I have one complaint about the first Ratchet and Clank game. Ratchet is an asshole in the game. He does have a change of heart at the end, but for the most game, he's an asshole, and he can be an un he can be unlikable at times. But I've I've watched people play this series, but isn't that really because he didn't have much of a father figure or even a mother figure I, to keep him in line? I guess so. True, but just still, like the, the way he he treats Clank throughout the game, and just like. That's just how he treats him. It's just like, I just really, 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 really didn't like how, how he acted. But for some reason, that, that I like that game the best in my opinion. Why? It's just who I am. I mean, I just like it the best. I mean, there were. I mean, Ratchet and Clank was pretty much. It's pretty much much the new mascot for for Sony in my opinion. Like I said, he's been in a ton of games. I heard they're making a new one for the PlayStation Five, which, which will have have a new female character. Which I forget uh, that. What'd you say? The female Lombax is name has been revealed as Ribbit. Ribbit? Oh. Yeah, like, it's a shame the game's only on the PS5, because, like... Yeah, it, Ribbit. Yeah, no, Ribbit, Ribbit, yeah. Yeah, like, it, it would be nice if the game was on the PS4 and stuff, because, like, just... But still, I feel like, 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 like Ratchet and Clank is kind of being melted at this point, because we had the crappy remake on the PS4, and we had those crappy spin-offs there and, like, and stuff, but... I, I mean, and a mediocre movie. Yes, I never saw the movie, but I know that the PS4 game I has... It. Yeah, I heard that the, 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 the PS4 4 game has scenes from the movie in the game, which is some which is some ancient practice that games used to do back then, like games like Toy Story 2 and A Bug's Life and stuff did that stuff back in back for the PlayStation 1 and all that stuff. So yeah, I remember games would do that a lot along, along with the James Bond games on the PS1 as well. So yeah, I remember that really well. <laughs> the times, yo! Yeah, but like, um... But we'll talk about that, like, when we, whenever we get to the PS4, for, we're talking about the PS4 in a future podcast, we'll talk about that then. But I just don't want to do that there, but, like, um, Sly Cooper is, Cooper was fun, but I can only, I only beat the first one, just like the second one just seemed oh, to... Yeah, that... Go ahead. Oh, yeah, I remember Sly Cooper was also one of those games that I played on the PS2. Yeah, because, like, I, go ahead. I actually played the entire series myself, like, like uh, sometime in the 2010s. I own all, I own the first four games, but I just said I couldn't. I can only beat the first one for some reason, but for some reason I enjoy them a lot. Especially because it's cool to play the raccoon in. I like raccoons and coons. The raccoons are one of my some of my favorite animals of all time. I think raccoons are cute. So like it's cool to be able to play as a raccoon in the video games. So that's, that's pretty cool there. 
Yeah, that was also pretty cool, but looking at it now, I think the main draw is that you're kind of playing as an anti-hero of sorts. Sort of, yeah, but he does oh, have... Guy. He has a good He has a good heart, though. He does have a good yeah, heart. You're, you're still He's a good kind guy, of like the Robin but... Hood. Yeah, you're just on the wrong side of the law, that's all. Mm-hmm. But, like, um, I do like in Sly Cooper how a lot of the cutscenes are told, like, those scenes where it just has the two heads talking and the, and, and the subtitles, so kind of like how it was with Metal Gear Solid, and speaking yeah, of, uh, <laughs> yeah, speaking of Metal Gear Solid, we got, we had Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, and, like, Metal Gear Solid 2 was, it was actually considered one of the best games of all time, but a lot of people in, in the West here didn't like it because of Raiden, but here's an interesting thing about Raiden, I don't know if you guys knew about this, Raiden is Hideo Kojima's favorite character in the Metal Gear Solid franchise. No joke, I, I looked the stuff up. Raiden is his favorite character in the Metal Gear Solid franchise. And, pe I mean, and people... I can't exactly blame him. And people in Japan love Raiden as well. So I'm guessing just like... They didn't like... The people in the West didn't like how Raiden was whining and stuff like that when he... Well, like, yes, I will admit... He does sound more more mature in the Japanese version. I mean, but I guess the guess was that they were kind of making it aim towards like a Luke Skywalker like character, like like Snake was Han Solo and Ryan was supposed to be be like 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 Luke Skywalker. So that's why they did that. They did that that there. Although I do really wish that they had they had the option for the Japanese audio because the lip syncing does not match up to the English at all in the cutscenes. Only matches up to the up matches up in the codec calls, but still. I guess you can't, I guess since it was such a big game, I can forgive it there. I can, I can forgive it. But like, um... Arpon! Samus took her clothes off! <laughs> but yeah, like, <laughs> there are certain games that can get away with, with only having an English voice setting and not having the Japanese audio. But there was a series that I thought should have kept it in Japanese, and that is Xenosaga. Anybody ever heard of the, the Xenosaga series? I've never knew about the Xenosaga series up in... Till Chica Conroy was doing a Let's Play of Xenoblade on the Wii, which will be a discussion for, like, next time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, with Xenosaga, not having the Japanese audio was a big turnoff. I mean, the game was still fun, but just, like, lip sync not matching up. It was it played more like a manga with a lot of big cuts, like a Metal Saw was like. But, like, too many, but just, like, like, with, um, just, like, like, the lip sync is almost always off, it just doesn't match up at all, it, I sold the games, I sold the games for that, because, yeah, I mean, I should have kept them as, like, collectible items like that, but, you know, if you're not, if, I mean, like, it, just, it was a turnoff, I mean, it, it, it just was a turnoff for me and stuff, and, like, um, I mean, like, with, um, I think her name was, I think the main character, her name was Cosmos, like that, but it's still, like, just, just couldn't really, couldn't really get into it, because, like, it's a turnoff there, but, like, um, Film Saga 2 had, had some problems that people didn't like, and Film Saga 3 tried to go for that, that classic, JRPG-like thing, which I thought was kind of a turn off there. What I mean by classic one of the things was that, like, it had, like, the still images with the text while the voice acting played. It was kind of one of those things there, which was, like, kind of, eh, in my opinion. But I know people like, I know people like Xenosaga, but I was one of the people who just couldn't get into it. I tried my best. I really tried. I really, really tried. But I just couldn't get I'll be into right it. back. You guys keep continuing with PS2 talk. Okay. I'm just going to grab something for the GameCube talk. Be my guest. Take all your time. Well, yeah, but yeah, like um, back to it, like with, with, with PlayStation 2. I mean, like this is this this won't be only PlayStation 2 talk. We had to talk about the GameCube and the Xbox there. But I'm I'll wait. I'll wait for Sedet to get back before until we talk about the GameCube. Can I say something about the current subject? Sorry. Uh, go ahead. The the only reason I ever really knew of Xenosaga back in the day was because Josh Gorcher kind of talked about Albedo from that series. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's true. Oh. Why is that the... Who is this guy who said this again? I'm, 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 I think... Uh, Josh Gorcher? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember now. Sorry. I was having a brain fart there for a sec, so yeah, by my bad there. But, like, um, when it came to, like, um, like, like that fun stuff, fact. like... Voice by, fun fact. Voice by Crispin Freeman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep, Crispin Freeman, yep. I, I, I think I knew about that, that that as well, definitely. But, like, um, here's the interesting thing about, about Xenosaga. It was kind of the sequel to the PS1 game called Xenogears. You ever heard of that game, Xenogears? Barely. That game was kind of a sequel to Xenosaga, to, to Xenogears. And that I'm not making that up. But, like, um, it also had two of the most rare and expensive games on the PS2. 
Kuan and Rule of Rose. Kuan was a Japanese ancient survival horror while Kuan, I mean, Kuan was an ancient Japanese survival horror while Rule of Rose was a game that took place in the 1930s in the UK. And Rule, I actually reviewed Rule of Rose. I have no intention to get, to get Kuan because like, it's just, I don't really have an interest in Kuan. I mean, I know people like it and say, oh, you should get it because it's so rare and expensive, but I'm aware of that. But here's the thing. It just doesn't interest me that much that much this thing. Maybe I might want to change the future, but not right now, no. I mean, Rule of Rose is so dark and depressing that there is a cutscene near the end of the game that can actually make make you cry. It made me cry when I first saw the cutscene, and it, it'll make other, other people cry as well. I'm not the only one who's cried with this cutscene, because the cutscene is so depressing with all the crying going on and stuff. I mean, I can't really, really give it away, because I don't want to spoil it, but I told a friend of mine who's a gamer and how... That cutscene was like it was like holy shit, that was intense. Like I can't, I couldn't believe it. You know, I couldn't believe it because, oh man, because like the PlayStation Two was known to have a lot of survival horror games. Like it had like had like like, like two had like one of my favorite survival horror games of all time, Silent Hill Three. I mean, a lot of people like Silent Hill Two better, but I thought Silent Hill Three was 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 better. I, mean, I just, just like the story better, like the character Heather. Heather Mason better and all that stuff. It was just, it was, it was, it was a great game. And interesting note here, actor, the actress who voiced Heather Mason in Silent Hill 3 was named Heather Morris. So not Heather Morris from Glee, it was a different, different Heather Morris. Like, that was around, that, that, that was like known for voice setting long before Glee came out. So yeah, that's, it's two different, two different actresses with the same name is what it is. And like, like I said, the PS2 had tons of survival horror games. Also had. Their port of the Dreamcast game, Resident Evil Code Veronica X, which is an okay Resident Evil game. You just do dial up there, and, and, and the lighting is way too dark. Especially on a modern day television, it's really dark to see. So it's like, it's just, it's not really good to be running around in the dark with no weapons and like very little ammo. You're, 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 you're going to be screaming at the top of your lungs saying, get me out of here. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Yeah, I guess I just I uh, tripped down memory lane with like all that all that darkness and stuff and all the murky textures and just ugh. But what can you do? I mean, PS2 was not the best, wasn't the best looking, did wasn't the best console for good graphics for uh, in the beginning because it had I uh, had those like blue those those blue bond discs which don't work in a PT model. They work in a PX model, so. Be sure, if you have a thick PS2, be sure you have a PX model, because the PT models, they won't run the blue bottom discs. Because mine used to, but then like they start working and such. I mean, I have two models of the PS2, the slim one, and my PX model that I got after my PT models kind of, kind of went to crap. So, I just got that, I just got, I, I stick my, I, I use my, my, raise my PX model to record my footage. So, yeah, I just have like two, but I have a backup there if something happens there, you know. But um, I will. Don't worry. We'll 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 get to um. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to the to the GameCube in a little bit. I know Sadet and Link are dying to talk about the GameCube because they're because those those are the systems that they played. But I just wanted to get my memories out there for, for the PS2 because I had a lot of fun memories of the PS2. PS2 was definitely one of one of my my favorite consoles. Of course, like when the court talked about it, Twisted Metal Black was on there as well, and just so many great games, so many bad games. There were some bad games like Tomb Raider, Angel of Darkness, and. Uh, but, um, I think I said all I I think I said as much as I, I think I said enough. Oh, I forgot to mention one or another series that was popular. Grand yeah. Theft Auto was popular on there with Grand Theft Auto 3, Grand Theft Auto by City, and San Andreas. Oh, man. Tell me you guys have played Grand Theft Auto. Have you played Grand Theft Auto at all? Link or Sedet, you played those? Pardon? Have you played Grand Theft Auto? Any Grand no. Theft Auto? Plus, I'm one actually time. one of those people that are completely against Grand Theft Auto. Dotto. Why is that? Just wondering. I don't care if you are. I'm just wondering why. Because of pretty much all the illegal activities in that game. Well, I respect your opinion. Don't get me wrong. I respect your opinion definitely, so I'm not going to fall for that. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not going to blame anyone for playing that game and find enjoyment in that game. However, I am going to blame the parents that are letting young children play that game and getting them into that those bad habits. True, yeah, because like I remember when I first played Grand Theft Auto 3, I was 13. I got it as a gift for making the honor roll. And when we went to go get it at Walmart, the person working there was telling my dad that the game was really bad. Teaches people bad things like car stealing and I think so I'm not gonna steal the car. I'm only thirteen. Why would I why would a thirteen year old steal a car? But I but yeah like um 
I played it at a sleepover at a, at a friend's house for a birthday, and I, I was so fascinated by how open the game was. Getting in any vehicle, going anywhere you want. It defined the term sandbox, because I didn't, I didn't really like Grand Theft Auto or Grand Theft Auto 2, because, like, it's just, those games I, did, I didn't like. I mean, like, especially because of, of, the, of the controls and everything like that. I just didn't really like, like the first two Grand Theft Auto games, along with London 1969. But Grand Theft Auto, Auto 3 changed my mind, definitely, because... Because like Grand Grand Theft Auto 3 was like so much so much different, and of course like Grand Theft Auto 3 like it's definitely like like had a lot of references to the movie like Scarface and all that stuff and like all the vehicles you could drive and like especially my my favorite vehicles in the in Grand Theft Auto 3 were was was the bus the stretch which which is a limousine the coach the another type of bus the dodo plane and like the security the ambulance. The Enforcer, which was like a, 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 a SWAT van, the cop car, and all that stuff. It was just a lot of cool vehicles there. And I did, I beat the story mode of Grand Theft Auto 3, and it seemed, and like, it it did, looking back at it, when I, when I beat it again, it comes off as kind of short, but still like, um, it for the time was considered long. And of course, like all the music too, like 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 Head Radio, Lipswall 6, Flashback FM 95.6, which had songs from, from the Scarface Face soundtrack, like... I'm Hot Tonight and Shake It Up by Elizabeth Daly, aka E.G. Daly, who voiced Tommy Pickles and Buttercup, uh, Tommy Pickles from Rugrats and Buttercup from Powerpuff Girls, and, um, of course, with Vice City, like, that was also, like, 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 had all that 80s music and stuff, in fact, it made me, me, it introduced me to a lot of, like, like, 80s artist stuff when I was, like, 13 going on 14 years old, and I actually do have the box set soundtrack of, uh, of Grand Theft Vice City and San Andreas, like, I got all the soundtracks, and it's really cool to have those, because it just... It was, just, it was just so cool there, because the first game to have, like, actual licensed music and all that stuff, and everything with Vice City. And, of course, like, with the cheat codes, too, like, cars driving on water and stuff like that, using the fun cheat codes and all stuff, just so much fun. And with San Andreas, like, holy crap, San Andreas was so big, I couldn't I couldn't believe they actually able to fit that whole game on one PlayStation 2 disc. It was, like, so badass there, for sure. Like, I actually had to stop a mother from buying the game for their young children by explaining what the game was and pointing out the ESRB rating and teaching her about that. She was embarrassed, to say the least. Why do so many why do so many parents make that mistake? Beats me. I mean like the, the age rating is there to prevent this kind of shit. And yet parents keep blaming the games instead of their own stupidity. Well, people don't want people don't want to look at it because, like, because like it's like people who want to buy Mortal Kombat or something like that that for their kids. So I mean, me like um, I was thirteen, so like yeah, like it was an M rated game, but just that we already had Max Payne, so I was able to get the game because my parents knew I wasn't gonna gonna steal cars or anything like that or like um, shoot people or something like that because they knew I wouldn't do that because like one. Hey, uh, mind if I chime in with something real quick? Be my guest. I like. I want you to chime in. Go ahead. I only really played a little bit of Grand Theft Auto when, like, a friend of my dad's had it, or something. But, uh, I mainly just like Grand Theft Auto for the memes. Understandable there, I mean, like, you, 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 how you, how you, how you, I'll have two number nines, a number nine, <laughs> with, a number six with extra dip. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Link, you guys laughing like crazy now. <laughs> I think I'm proud to welcome you to Burger Shot. Sir, I can't serve you. You want a pizza or what? Cluckety fuck, sir. Oh, man, you need to get yourself checked out or something when you, when you throw I up know, and stuff. I do remember seeing some Grand Theft Auto <laughs> videos that involved glitches, and those actually made me laugh. Oh, I think one of them had a glitch with the swings, unless I'm thinking of a different game where you can send your car flying. Yeah, like, they had a lot of cool-ass cheat codes where you can actually make your car fly in the air like like an airplane or, like, even help. You don't like... need a cheat code for this glitch. I know, you but I'm... You just have to rev up towards this specific swing set in one of the games, and... Woo! Oh, yeah. In fact, like, 
here's something cool I did. This is like I know like, when they came up with the infinite health cheat, I let my car sink to the bottom of the water, and I was still driving the car very slowly but surely, and the car like got down so deep that like it pretty much just just like dissolved into the ground, and before you know it. I'm back on driving, driving on the ground. It was like, it was just, I wanted to, I heard about this, about this, about this, this trick here, and I thought, okay, interesting there, but like, um, just that, okay. But of course it was really cool to go inside buildings, buy a lot of property, and like, um, go into like, um, like work, go into like gyms, restaurants, and like casinos and all that stuff, which is so much fun, and they had, and they had, had a jetpack as well, and that was cool to have to have, to have a jetpack. And like it just, they they made that game. They put that game with, with as much content in it as possible, and that was so cool. Unfortunately, the PS3 and the Xbox 360 versions start that have tons of glitches and stuff. But like, I never played it. I heard it that, so I can't really say for sure. But like, getting but like, I only complaint I have. One of the because I have a San Andreas is that the soundtrack is not very good. I'm not a big big fan of like rap or R and B or hip hop and stuff, so I don't really care for a lot of the music except for like Radio X and K Dust and all that stuff. Just just me though. But like um just so many so many many games that we could talk about. We'd be here all day, but we gotta move on here. We've been talking about the PS2 for like about a half hour now. But now I know Link and Zeta are here ready to talk about this. We're gonna talk about the Nintendo GameCube. My favorite yeah. Nintendo console of all time. <laughs> I'll let, almost came off. <laughs> I'll let I'll let Sadette talk first. She's been dying to talk about the GameCube, so Sadette, you take it away with the GameCube. I have things I want to talk about. I know Link does too, but the GameCube. Originally, the code name was called the Dolphin. <sighs> mm-hmm. It is one of so my. That's where the Dolphin name came from? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep, that's what. But uh, that's true. That's where the emulator got its name from. The code name for the GameCube being called the Dolphin. Similar to like how it was with Nintendo 64 being codenamed Nintendo Ultra 64 and the Wii being being codenamed Rev- Revolution and stuff. So that's actually interesting there that 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 how they and did. Go ahead. I out of the home console systems I've had and still own with some of them. I bu- I think the GameCube is currently the second or third most games I have for the system. Oh, believe me, I have so many memories of the GameCube. I actually, I got a total of 23 GameCube games. Nice. I mean, like, I, I, I can name all the game games I had, but, like, um, let me tell you my story with the GameCube. We got it a year out, exactly a year later on Christmas Eve. That same person who gave us a PS2 got us a GameCube. I remember we got the black, the, the black one, but I wanted the purple one because the purple one was advertised everywhere, and I wanted, like I said, the purple one, the main color. But I was the happy to. The purple is actually the basic color for the GameCube. The oh. black one is the variant. Oh, okay, because like, just like I, I thought the purple one was the main color. I wanted the purple one, but still, having a black one was still it's, it was better than nothing, definitely. Cause like I remember. But the rare color, like the. What's the, what's the gray one? Hardest color to get was the gray slash silver. I know. I I remember that one. That was that one was selling like crazy. But like, I, let me tease my story with, with the GameCube. Of course, like we got games for it. We got Luigi's Mansion, Wave Race, Blue Storm, Pikmin, Super Monkey Ball, and Star Wars Rogue Leader, Rogue Squadron Two. One of my favorite Star Wars games of all time. I remember being excited to play Luigi's Mansion because. I, I liked Luigi more than, than Mario, and it was very cool to have Luigi have his own game. A lot of people didn't really like Luigi's Mansion because you couldn't jump in the game, and it was basically a game where, where you catch ghosts with a vacuum cleaner. Well, you know what? I think it's cool because, you know, Mario's not, Mario's not going to be all about jumping and, uh, jumping and stuff like that. Let, let it have some variety. Although I, do mm-hmm. wish there was, I do, although I do wish there was voice setting in the game, but still, like, I mean, it was, I actually beat that game, and, like, um, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like Professor E. Elvin Gad, he sounds like a kid. He's an old man, but he sounds like a kid. That 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 didn't make sense at all. Okay, I'm done. But the games I have are Sonic Adventure DX, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon. XD Gale of Darkness, Shadow the Hedgehog, 
Luigi's Mansion Pokemon Channel, Sonic Heroes, Mega Man Anniversary Collection, Sonic Adventure DX, oh wait, I already mentioned that, uh, Sonic Gem Collection, Tales of Symphonia, did I mention Soul Calibur 2 already? Nope. Mario Kart Double Dash. Good game. Dance Best Dance Mario. Revolution Mario Mix. The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Sonic Riders. Mario Party 7. Star Fox Assault. Smash Bros. Melee. Kirby's Air Ride. The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. And did I mention The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure yet? No, you mentioned Twilight Princess. Okay. Well, for me, like, um, I, I don't know if you ever played Star Fox, Fox Adventures, what's what supposed to be called Dynasty Planet, with a different character. It was, it was, it was one of the last games made by Rare before, before they had that, they had that, 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 that like, joint, like, agreement with Microsoft. But Getting remember, sold out to Microsoft? Yeah, know? yeah. Like, um, Star Fox Adventures, I thought the game was pretty cool because it was actually, Lee, you, you were on foot a lot and stuff. It kind of, it was kind of like Legend of Zelda, but not like how the Zelda way I don't, I, I didn't like for them. Because, like, it was Fox or Cloud, and you were, like, trying to save, you got to talk to dinosaurs and stuff. That was actually pretty cool, like, to have, have, have a dinosaur as your sidekick. And you had, you played the female character at the beginning, her name is Crystal. And the funny thing is, like, in the beginning, the dinosaurs and Crystal and, like, the main bear, General Scales, they speak in dinosaur language. But you know what I know what's interesting about the, uh, dinosaur language? What? It's actually Japanese. Really? Yes, yes. And like, um, of course, I'm gonna, like, it's just that, like, it's, you, you pretty much spend a lot of time, like, breaking boxes, defeating enemies. It's a one-player game, and you have, and you gotta, and you, and you can save the game at any time. It, you can fly, you, there are missions that you can fly in the game and start like that, but like, you know, a lot of people hated the and game. And play traditional Star Fox. Yeah, but it's basically just like, like, get from point A to point B, but still, I don't mind it, mind it at all. I mean, Star Fox, I mean, I mean, Fox McCloud himself is kind of, comes off as kind of whiny and stuff like that, that, he comes off, off, off as like a whiny brat, but like, um, it, I didn't buy me because, like, you know, he, he hasn't been doing anything for a while after he defeated Andros and stuff like that, which I can't tell you what happens at the end because I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but you get Crystal Staff and you do a lot of cool things there with it, like, like you can shoot fire, yeah. ice, and you, 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 you can use it as, as like a jet, as, a, as, a, as, a, as like this hover jump thing. It's really cool to be able to use this thing, and it pretty much made, made Fox, Star Fox a new, uh, in a new direction there, which a lot of people didn't like, but, you know, I thought it was pretty Anna cool. Fox Tempitals was more first experience with the Star Fox series. Star Fox 64 Star was Fox. mine. Star Fox 64 was mine. <laughs> and yet, there, <laughs> and yet if you want to talk about like great looking games with great graphics, Resident Evil, the remake of Resident Evil for the GameCube, oh man, I mean, I did not like the game at first, I was more a fan of original games, but playing the remake again, like I like and stuff, I mean, Resident Evil remake is it is actually a way how to make a remake. I mean, it's got like more rooms in it and everything. I guess I was just a little biased because like the original was fine where it was, but still the remake is great. Of course, with Resident Evil Zero as well had the new partner system and they you can leave items anywhere you want. That was really cool as well. And of course, like I want to talk a little, a little bit about but Star Wars Rogue Leader because because like um. Tuesday was Star Wars Day. May the fourth be with everybody. And like Star Wars Rogue Leader. That was the best Rogue Squadron game ever made. I mean, one of the cool things about it is that, that they actually found the original actor for Wedge and Tilly, Dennis Lawson, to voice Wedge in the game. And you play as Wedge throughout most of the game, so that's really cool to have had to have the original actor of Wedge portray Wedge in the game. That's really cool there, and like, you do a lot of flying missions, like, you, of course it's all flying missions. You have the X-Wing, the Y-Wing, the, the A-Wing, the B-Wing, signed by Admiral Akbar, the Millennium the, the Falcon, the Slave 1... The TIE Advance, which is a Darth Vader ship, you can pilot an Imperial Shuttle, a TIE Fighter, and you can also pilot, pilot a Cloud Car in Cloud City. And here's something interesting about that, that like, in the cockpit, you can like, run or you can like, move around freely, picking any ship you want. Like, they have both, like, they have like, multiple X-Wings and A-Wings, or multiple Y-Wings, you can pick any of them. Sure, it doesn't change anything at all, but it's just, it's so cool to like, like, walk around, and there's so much, 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 just dialogue in that game, it's not even funny. Actually, when like, um... It's just like everything feels next gen there, like 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 the way everything feels, the menus, the the level select screen, the way you walk around the cockpit, the way just everything just looks so 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 awesome there. I I was upset when Factor Five went out of business stuff, but just that Star Wars Rogue Leader was like it's also 
my buddy JJ Brother 88s one of my favorite games too. That's how I first learned. That's how I learned he was a big Star Wars fan because had him over my house today, and I went to go 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 get us some snacks. And he's playing Rogue today. So, dude, you're a fan of you're a fan of Star Wars? I didn't know that. That's so cool. And then like like we couldn't beat the first level at first. So we spent a lot of time playing Tatooine training in the T16 Skyhopper, trying to trying to find like the Crash Tie Fighter, find Jabba's palace, find the Sandcrawler, Bantha herds, Dubex, and all that stuff. And 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 the crate dragon boats and all that stuff, just so much fun. I can I can talk about this that is for hours talk about about Rogue Leader. But you know, like we gotta be we can't do one but just I know enough. that feeling. Yes, and like just that it makes you feel like you're playing the main like playing parts of the movie like Battle of Hoth and like cool thing is you can you you can switch ships that you have to like um dock and like and like switch ships to during during certain missions and there's one mission where you're still in the pale shuttle if you play the game in the daytime you play as the y-wing disabling the, the, the sensors if you play at nighttime you're the snow speeder evading the sensors through 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 this this thick coat of fog down below and you can steal a tie fighter Fighter Two, if you can, like in the nighttime one, it's so cool that it has variety like that because it got like let's like, get like 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 the internal clock on the system there, and just it was just so great when you beat it. And of course, you got some extras too, like levels where you can play as the Imperials, like play as Darth Vader, and they also have an endurance level. With the endurance level, you gotta fight 99 waves of of of, of bad guys, and it'll take you about about a few hours to beat. I kind of stopped because the endurance test kind of bored me. Just nah, not for me. But they have levels where you where you pilot where you pilot where you use the Millennium Falcon's turret after escapes the Death Star, and you're, you're, you're trying to 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 uh, to avoid avoid Imperials in the in the asteroid field in like in, in like that part in the Empire Strikes Back. Unfortunately, Rebel Strike Rogue Squadron Three. I wasn't. I didn't really like the game as much as Rogue Leader because those dreaded on foot missions, the bad voice acting, they couldn't get Dennis Lost Bat Bat to voice Wedge, and the fact that like um, the cut the black transitions in certain cutscenes. You know, I don't know if you mean by there. Like, there's a scene playing, it cuts to black, then transitions to another scene. That felt very amateur. Like, I don't know why they did that. And there's frame rate issues, especially in the co-op mode, and just like. Just didn't really, really do it for me. I, I couldn't do it. But like with Wave Race Blue Storm, best Wave Race game ever. Let love to play as a Yumi Stewart and Akari Hayami and 1080 Avalanche, which was a good game. It was, it was one of the, it was one of the one of the only few GameCube only games that had licensed music in it by like Finger Eleven, Seether, Cauterize, Boy Sets Fire, and more. And like just fun time times there. And like. Of course, like um, we need to talk about the discs that the game came on. They were small little discs that 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 that, that were like that, that weren't mm-hmm. that were smaller. People were actually I was actually amazed, I was amazed that, that they were ha- actually you get a lot of voice editing and good graphics on those small little discs. That was amazing which was with Resident Evil. That was cool there. Well, Nintendo and companies that worked with Nintendo on certain games, they knew what they were doing in terms of space and how to downsize the files. Mm-hmm. And of course, I, you mentioned Smash Brothers Melee. That was one, that's the best Smash Brothers game ever made, in my opinion. I love Smash Brothers Melee the best. I just, I like I think the newest one currently is the best. I can't say. I don't have a Wii U mostly or, or, because, or whatever it's on. Mostly because Zelda got in some really good buffs, and I really like the newcomers. Yeah, I mean, like I love playing as Princess Zelda in a uh, in a uh, Smash Bros. Melee, and like playing as Princess Peach and stuff there too. Zelda was like well, like the first character I ever played as in like the classic mode because whoa, imagine playing as Zelda! Holy cow! Because I got that game as a Valentine's Day gift from my parents, and my brother got Universal Studios Theme Park Adventure, which was not a very good game. I and mean, we're not gonna talk about that game, but like um. It had Super Mario Sunshine, my favorite 3D Mario game, and it was the only Mario game to actually have full voice acting and stuff. And it was like, I, I like Mario Sunshine. A lot of people don't like it, but I liked it. Mario Kart Double Dash was the best Mario Kart game. And it had a lot of Mario sport games too, like Mario Golf Toadstool Tour, Mario Go- Mario Tennis, Super Mario Baseball, and the, and the soccer one, Super Mario Sluggers that I don't really remember. 
But like, um, just the I would. ones were really cool. Yeah, I would always play as Princess Daisy because Princess Daisy was my, my favorite female character in the Mario franchise. And, and uh, they gave the characters a lot of sass and attitude in that game. Well, yeah, I know. Like, especially like Daisy's one of the few people who uh, Daisy and Peter are like the, the few people who actually talk. It makes sense they talk. They don't talk in third person like Mario and Luigi and like Wario and when Waluigi and all of them. But like, of course, I, I didn't really care for Mario Party that much. It wasn't for me. They had a Donkey Kong game when they were like called Donkey Konga. That game sucked. I did not like Donkey Kong. Donkey though. Kong Jungle Beat? Didn't like it either. I did, it was nothing like 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 Donkey Kong 64 or the Donkey Kong Country games. That's nothing. because it wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be its own little thing. Really? A rhythm game. Really? <laughs> yes. That's, well, good thing, good thing I got suckered into buying Donkey Konga, but I realized the mistake I made. That after I beat all the songs and beat the minions, I was done with the game, didn't touch it, and then the bongos collected dust until we sold our GameCube because we didn't have any room <laughs> for it. We did have Sonic Adventure 2 Battle and Sonic Adventure, Adventure DX Director's Cut. While I will admit I liked them both, I wished I owned, I wished I had a Dreamcast to buy the Dreamcast cast games, but you know, like, I'm glad I got to play them and stuff because it was, it, was, it, was it was the first time we saw Sega. Same. Saw Sega and stuff like that. Because, of course, they introduced us to Crush 40 as well. The, 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 the band that makes all those Sonic songs. Like that. By the way, Sega really does what Nintendo They uh -huh. went third party. But, but you want to know, know what was weird about Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut? That's a remake. That's like a port of the first game. And they released that game, released, released that port after Sonic Adventure 2. It doesn't make any sense. Why would they do that? Probably so people could... Like, experience the original for those that hasn't? You know how I found out that was that was a port of the first game? When playing Sonic Mega Collection and it, and it had to play the History of Sonic video, it played played the song Open Your Heart at at the end. No, at the end of like the history things. So I figured, I knew it was Sonic Adventure 1 because the way the characters looked, the mouse looked and everything like that was just, yeah. But like, um, me being used to Sonic Adventure 2, it took me a while to get used to the adventure field and all that stuff. Cause I, it took me some time to get used to that stuff. But like, um, I did And then, unfortunately, we got Shadow the Hedgehog. What do you mean, unfortunate? I thought you liked that game. I do. It's a guilty pleasure. I know it's bad. I know I it's like a it really too. bad game, I but like it's it. a I like pleasure it. for me. I like it as well. I mean, like, and I it's like... it's not the only guilty pleasure GameCube game I have. Pokemon Channel's the same. I can't say anything about Pokemon, but, like, I did have Sonic Heroes. I did for the PS2 and the GameCube. But I didn't like Sonic Heroes. I thought I thought it got very repetitive. Shell the Hedgehog was better. He had to use guns like that. But some of the missions can get very frustrating. And if it's a Japanese art, mm -hmm. it's not match up with with the match up with the lip syncing and stuff. But still, Honestly, like, Sonic Sonic Heroes is one of those games that's kind of a bit of a technical mess, but you can still play it. But like people still enjoy it. It's like one of those. It's like another one of those games that a lot of people like and a lot of people don't like. Uh, Shadow of the Hedgehog is when the quote-unquote dark age of Sonic started. And yet a lot of the... Uh, like, say what you will about Sonic 06 with its many bugs, but from what I've seen, it's still playable. Yes. Ish. Yes. Especially if you have the patience. Yeah, I, I did have the patience, I did beat Sonic 06, and I liked it, but I'll talk about that. We'll talk about that next episode, when we talk about the other concept of that. But, um, right, right. but like, I remember, um, like, with, with, like, with Shadow the Hedgehog, I did own it first for the GameCube, and I got it for the PS2, because I just, that we sold our GameCube, and I wanted the game back, so I decided to buy it back. And I remember, I remember like, my, I remember, like, um, my brother was not too happy with me about that, because, like, like, it's just that, I know it was a kind of waste of money, to waste 20 dollars and stuff, but, you know, what can you do? But Sonic Heroes, yeah, like, just, it got kind of repetitive, I mean, like, it's just that, playing the same levels, just different characters, just slightly diff more difficult, so it just, just couldn't re really do that there. I will admit, and some of the to music... To me, it was worse. Especially to hear What I'm Made Of by Crush 40. Yeah. Epic song. Well, you know that that song was on the, the Team Rose theme song, Follow Me? You know you know that you know the song, you know the uh, Team Follow Rose Follow me song? inside, outside. Yeah. How can I forget that song? Well, the the person, the girl, the, the girl who sings that song, Kay Hanley, she's in one of my favorite rock bands. Let's to clear, she had a song called Here and Now back in 1993, and that, I was like, and, that, and like, that's how I, I knew, how, how, like, I knew who that voice was, and, like, of course, like, like, the other song, I didn't really like the other songs much, like, like, Team Sonic song, We Can, and This Machine, Team Dark, and Team Chaos, but Team Chaos, the Team Chaos one, 
just that they, they, I don't like how they keep referencing seeing the Sonic characters that much, just that, just, just, they, they sound very kiddie-like, I mean, Sonic Heroes could sound kiddie-like, because, like, of, of, of the name of the song, of the name of the, of the song of Sonic Heroes, but, it just doesn't, ha I mean, it's by Crush 40, so they don't, they're not gonna do that stuff, and what I made up, like, the, the three best songs, vocal songs in that game are, Sonic Heroes, Follow Me, and What I'm Made Of. And they're, they're, they're great there for sure. I'd have to disagree with two of those. Which ones do you disagree with? I disagree with Team Rose's theme and the opening theme for Sonic Heroes. What do you disagree with them on? Personally, I think Team Chaotic and Team Dark's themes are better. Well, yeah, like, but Julian K. Music Julian... is an art, and art is subjective. Well, Julian K., who did, uh, who did, uh, This Machine for Team Dark, he also, they also did Waking Up and Shadow the Hedgehog, and Gunnar Nelson, they did Team Cat. Waking I can't... up, breaking up, yeah. this yeah. is what it's made <laughs> Yep, <laughs> and, like, of course, like, Shadow the Hedgehog had, had a song by, by Power Man 5000, almost, almost dead, which Power Man 5000 is one of my favorite, favorite rock bands of all time, but, like, um, yeah, like I, my whenever I got Shadow a, the Hedgehog had a lot of headbanging ending themes. Yeah, because All Hail Shadow, which is a song that that everybody hates for some reason. But I didn't think it was that bad. Well, the I version I personally loved that song. The Sonic Six version by Crush Forty, I didn't really like. I liked I liked the other version in Shadow the Hedgehog better because that's the original version. Same. And of course, like um, Chosen One All by Shadow. Yeah, and um, Chosen One. <laughs> And I'm um, chosen one by A2. That was a good one. There was probably wish I may, wish I might be someone else tonight. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I, I wish, wish I was never born, born at all. all. Yeah, I know. I mean, I like that stuff there. And um, the album version of that song is actually longer than the than the version in the game. No joke. Cool. I have the CDs. Well, I had them. I sold them. But and I had them. And another thing. About Back to that game, there's actually like one or two songs that were removed, but you I know, can I know, find Mag magnify one of them. Yeah, magnify who I am. There's another one called something broken. I heard that. I heard both. Yeah, them, yeah. broken. Some something broken. Yeah, they, they, they removed it because they were too dark or something like that. But like you see, a power five for that stream. And of course, the Crush Forty songs, "I Am All of Me," which is the main theme. But you, you can't hear the whole thing in game, so you gotta buy the CD to hear the whole thing. And of course, like "Never Turn Back" was also was is the ending song, which is good. There and too. if you're patient with the final boss. Of that game, it's actually revealed that the shadow you play as is the original shadow. I that knew, I know, I got. Quote, die. I I know, I play, I got, I got, I got all ten endings in, and the um, the final boss ending there too. You managed to get that message to appear. I know I got the message, but I but I put two and two together and realized that I was playing as a real shadow the whole time. I put two together with like um how like what 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 what, what Black Doom did and everything. So I kind of had, had, had a feeling there was going on. Sonic... But it's nice to get that final confirmation. Yeah, I, I knew I knew all along that it was a real shadow. I knew all along. I mean, Me I mean, too. I, I mean, but it was just nice to hear that confirmation so you could go, yes, I was right. I knew I was right the whole time. I mean, I, I knew I knew I'm, I was right. But there were some characters there that were really unlikable, like Commander. I did not like the Commander, but he wanted yeah. to put Shadow down. Within and Black Doom sometimes felt a bit stale, and they could have done better with the different good and evil endings. I knew he was a bad guy from the start. I knew he was a bad guy from the start because of his voice or thing. How he, he just wanted the Chaos Emeralds just to warp the comet down, down to Earth. I am a bad guy. Yeah. Okay, oh. I'll help. Yeah. If and the like, player chooses to, that is. Yeah. Sonic Rider... And, I, I, Go ahead. An annoying thing with Shadow the Hedgehog, it didn't really matter what side you choose. Both sides were idiots. Yeah. Especially with the enemy you choose to make the enemy out of. And the and the vehicles that okay, you can You get hit by your allies, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, I know. And the vehicles. Like, I hated the vehicles. Like... Like the second, the second level after you choose the good path with Stopless, it is so hard to destroy that that ship. When I first did that, I had to, I, I had to use action replay codes to help me for the first time, and then yet. 
I I never used an action replay code. I just kept focus on the shooting on that shit. Well, just that I was desperate. But I don't. But I, but I, was, I only did it one time, though. So yeah. But of course, like there were some levels there that were kind of ridiculous. Collect all the stole help tales. Collect all the stolen rings from Eggman's theme park. I mean, what is up with that? Why would you make something like that? that doesn't make any sense. Like collect all the rings. There's the that one. damn fourth chaos world. At least we got that meme. I see. We're still talking about Shadow here. Well, <laughs> we have a lot to talk about because we because I was a big I was a huge Sonic fan and so that was too. But like, um, but mm-hmm. like, you know, recently became a bit more of a Sonic fan. Yeah, because like, I mean, of course, like, like, I'm um, with, with Sonic Riders. I did not like Sonic Riders. I tried, but I couldn't. I couldn't get into Sonic Riders. I really tried. It just, it was just one of those games I couldn't get into. I tried my hardest. I managed to beat Sonic Riders. I couldn't. I didn't really care for it. Except for like, like everything. I just didn't really like it. And I dare not play the sequel Zero Gravity. So yeah, I'm. It's the only month the best. Okay, only, as long as you don't play Free Rider. I know about that least, one. Sonic Riders games are actually good. The only Nobody funny, the only cool part about um Sonic Riders is when Knuckles tells Stales, "Stop! I get it, okay? It flows. That's good enough for me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the look on Knuckles' face. Go ahead. Sonic Riders just generally kind of excels in the comedy department. Yeah, because like, I mm-hmm. like, when Knuck, right before Knuckles says that line, he has that face like going, I'm going to go ape shit on Tails, I'm going to go with Jam and tell him, stop! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ape shit. Too much info. I may be street smart, but I'm not technologically advanced smart. Yeah, yeah, like his Tails is like wasting, I mean, Knuckles did us a favor because he didn't have to waste time here in Tails talking, talking, talking about the... I think, this is around, I think this is around the time where Knuckles started to be more portrayed as a bit more of the dumb muscle. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, that's but true. But he wasn't as dumb as he is now. He still had his moments. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like Sonic Forces and all that stuff. Yeah, and how he looks in that Sonic... In that Sonic, um... Sonic, Sonic, Sonic Jam. Colors onward. Sonic Colors Onwards kind of mangled the characters for the most part. Yep. The only except being Eggman. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Sonic Boom cartoon was good. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like the only real bright spot in the entire meta era, let's call it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And speaking of Sega, there we also the PS2 got ports. Oh, we we've had mentioned like um the, the GameCube got a port of Crazy Taxi, along with the PS2 did too, along with the PS2 version of Space Channel Five there yeah. and stuff and stuff too. Excuse me. But like yeah, but that, I should talk about the third, but we gotta move on here. The one I can go through the quickest is Soul Calibur 2. GameCube version is the best because one of the playable characters I that know. just stars in this version is Link. Yeah, I had the PS2 version. Meanwhile, last time. the other versions I believe had Spawn from what was it, Marvel or DC? Um. And I don't remember who the other one for the other system was. Oh. But personally, GameCube version is the best. Yeah, well, I had the PS2 version. I liked hey, I was a big fan of Tekken, so I liked hey, Heihachi. But there was also, was also Met- Metroid Prime, which had some of the best-looking graphics ever, and it defined Metroid, definitely. Then the next game is Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. I can talk about this a little more. When I first saw the opening cutscene of this game, I was like, holy... Shit? And- holy shit? <laughs> mm-hmm. I knew it. And just, like, the expansion from the original story. And apparently this wasn't the original story. The original plot was going to be the character from the first Pokemon Coliseum game that you play as was originally going to be the villain. I'm pretty sure that's, like, unconfirmed. That's what I heard. That That's uh, actually kind of just... From what I hear, that rumor is actually false. It would have been badass, though. Yeah, but like, there was a game you never had to mention, Godzilla Destroy Monsters mainly which was supported the Xbox later, but you know, don't really... But man. still, yeah. it was 
It's one of my favorite GameCube games. One of my top five favorites. The only Pokemon game I knew about on the GameCube was Coliseum, and I don't, and I just, I was kind of, I was kind of, I kind of grew out of the Pokemon phase, like, I was, I was 15 at the time, and I was just like, well, just done. Kirby Air Ride, just like, I played it at a friend's house, just didn't really interest me much, Kirby Air Ride, I mean, I, I'll Pokemon. never... Pokemon! Go ahead. We'll get to Kirby Air Ride in a moment. And okay? F-Zero GX, I forgot about F-Zero GX, are you an F-Zero fan, Sadat, Link, and you guys fan of F-Zero? No, um, but I still want to talk about Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Go for ahead. A bit. Go ahead. I feel like XD Gale of Darkness has improved a lot on the formula from Colosseum. Mm hmm. Because they just expanded the story, because this is a continuation of sorts, taking place like, I think, two or three years after. I think Maybe it's five years or so. Five years, give or take. And I think it says somewhere that it's five years. The well, well, expansion anyway. of the different Shadow Pokemon, Shadow Lugia was actually really cool and was really the only Shadow Pokemon that actually looked different and menacing. Hmm. And the way it just steals a cargo ship off the ocean and you end up finding that cargo ship later on in the game it was just like whoa whoa man very cool <laughs> but there's a lot more i can say about it but i can't quite figure out the right words makes sense so understandable it's just any pokemon fan out there if you have a GameCube or have a good emulator to emulate the game, I definitely recommend it. Mm hmm Next game we can go into is Kirby Air Ride now. Yes. I have quite a bit to talk about this as well. Well, I want to I want to say something too. I played it at a friend's house and I thought it was just meh. I was not, I was, I, I kind of like was never the biggest Kirby fan ever, but I've only, I've only played a few Kirby games in my time. Kirby's Dream Land, Kirby 64, the Crystal Shards, Kirby Tilt and Tumble, and Kirby Air Ride. So I, have, I don't have much experience with Kirby aside from the aside from the anime as well. But still, just, just Kirby, wasn't for Kirby, me. Kirby, that's the name you should know. <laughs> Dude, King Diddy was the was my favorite part about the anime because he because I just know I just liked it the best. But that's just me though. But what do you guys say about Kirby Air Ride instead? Because I didn't really care for the game. I remember like my my dad tricking me. I actually me. have a fondness of the game. Because one of my best friends, we would play this game non-stop. In fact, we always just goofed around in the Kirby City Trials. Really? We would always goof around, and somehow, I managed to glitch the wing star out of bounds. Oh, really? So, uh, as for me, I didn't really do a lot of PS2 time. Well, I did at points, but... My main console was the GameCube. I had games like Super Mario Sunshine, Sonic Mega Collection, Sonic Adventure 2. I had Wind Waker on it. I had the SpongeBob SquarePants movie video game. That's a good one. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, I had quite a number of sports games. But I remember my favorite game on the GameCube, Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Now, again, this is when I was still kind of bad at video games in general. I just kept sucking and sucking and sucking, but for some reason, I, like, even though Thousand Year Door... Okay, here, my philosophy during RPGs was that I would just avoid any battles I can just to get to the good shit. Did not work out at all because I had little to no HP or FP, but kept trying to max out my BP. Actually, there are people that do BP only runs. Well, well, actually, it was more like keeping it, uh, keeping my HP and MP abysmally low, like barely above, like barely at fifty or so. Have you ever seen the one HP runs? I'm I'm not exactly coordinated enough to do those. <laughs> Nor am I. I'm gonna get hit no matter what. But yeah, I was absolute shit at RPGs. Like, 
I had this problem with Mario and Luigi as well because I kept dying to bosses over and over when I really should have been strong enough to take them out easily because I just kept avoiding battles because I didn't want to do the battles hmm. because I was just a stupid like and even when I got engaged in battles I kept running away which kind of cost me coins this is my rule of thumb for RPG games that have a level up system that yeah, actually that actually has like your character leveling up, not like Monster Hunter where the Palico level ups. I usually make sure, depending on the game and the difficulty, to be level four. 5 to 10 before the first boss. Then f somewhere between 15 and 20 before the second. Well, aside from Pokemon, I guess, you want to know what my philosophy was with Pokemon? What? Game roll everybody with a single Pokemon and practically neglect the others. Like, but by the time I got to the Elite Four, my Pikachu was almost level 7, was almost level 80. And everybody else was just starving for experience. Yeah, I've done that myself when I first played Pokemon when I was little. Yeah, I'm better at it now, but back then, oh boy, that that was that was just awful of me. Back then, we had no understanding of team building, or um, what's the word? Spreading out the experience. True. Yeah. Because we were just little dumb kids back then. But you've also... You kind of covered one of my favorite games, Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door, which was one I was going to talk about in a moment. But... All I could say now is, I never knew that you could recruit in this mouse until I watched Chuka Conroy's videos. I didn't know much about it. I didn't really get into the Paper Mario series. Just, I, just, I, I tried. I mean, I got. It's the comedic treasure. You I know. know. Some, you know something absolutely stupid about my playthroughs of Thousand Year Door in the past. What? I had the official strategy guide, and I noticed there was a. I noticed there was a door on the on like the scaffolding of Rogue Court, and I kept agonizing over how to get there. I didn't notice the door in the inn that led there. So I was just <laughs> stuck there trying to figure out how to get to Ms. Mao's on the building without even knowing that there's a goddamn door. Don't worry, I've done the same. I can't say anything. I didn't I didn't I didn't get Paper Mario Joe you know, on the GameCube so I can't really say anything about it. My brother got the, got the third one on the Wii, but just I just didn't put me into Paper Mario in general. It's just it's just me. It's just I tr I mean I at least admit, admit, admit I did try though, cause I got that for a gift for a Valentine's Day gift when I was 12 years old in year 2001, and the first game was addicting at first, but then after I just I just stopped playing it, it for some reason. I just stopped playing it. I don't know why. I just stopped playing it. I got kind of tired of the game, but like um, do you got anything else to say about the game before we move on to the Xbox? I got one game left to talk about, and this game has appeared on both the GameCube and PS2. Let's hear it. Tales of Symphonia. Oh, I thought you were gonna say Beautiful Joe for some reason, because that game. I haven't played either of those. Oh, I never Tales played it. Tales of Symphonia also got imported to Steam. It's. It was my first taste of the Tales of series. And I just fell in love, and there's a really good message in the game. Oh. It's pretty much the, it doesn't matter what you are, it doesn't matter your race or your family, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're adopted, you're you. Mm. It doesn't even matter what kind of creature you become in the future, whether you be stay as, say, human or, or become an angel, you're still you. Mm -hmm. Another thing that the... Well, the characters go through a lot of character development 
And it's really hard to cover it all because, at least for the GameCube version, the story spans two discs. Two discs? Damn. Yep. It's a very long game. And it's one that I really love. Hmm. And it also just like... It's just a great game. Anyone that's listening right now, either finish this podcast immediately, as either finish this podcast or pause it right now, go buy Tales of Symphonia, even though the PC version isn't as amazing as the GameCube version, it's still pretty much a close second. Just get it. Just get it. Just get it. In other words, just get it. What's that's trying to say? Just get it. <laughs> yeah, I never played a Tales of games, so I really can't say anything about it. I wanted to play Tales of uh, Vesperia on the PS4, but it's hard to find. But Tales of Vesperia is also a really good game. I know. The theme in that one is conviction. Oh, because remember of what that. the character goes through. Mm-hmm. How about you, uh, Link? Do you have anything to say about um, Tales of Symphonia? Again, I haven't really played it. Oh, okay. Uh, my, uh, the most I'm familiar with it is the Mii costume in Smash Brothers. So, there's one more game I just remembered. Hmm. I don't own it, but I used to rent it every time I had the chance. And that was the very first Fire Emblem game I ever played. Fire Emblem, Path, Path of Radiance. Of Radiance. Hmm. Yeah, because that's the only Fire Emblem on the GameCube, so that was my first mm-hmm. guess. Yep. It's a really great game. That's the one Ike's from. Yep. Yeah. That's Ike's original debut. Hmm. And then it got a sequel on the Wii in the form of Radiant Dawn. Yep. But originally, this game was going to be on the N64. Really? Really? Mm-hmm. That I did not know. There was going to be a Fire Emblem on the N64, but they moved it to the GameCube. Yep. It's, it's kind of like what they did with Resident Evil Zero. It was supposed to be on the N64, but they moved it to the GameCube. It was kind of like what they did with Resident Evil Zero. And, of course, like with Resident Evil 4. But, but that way, actually Resident Evil 4 was going to maybe be on the GameCube, but it was part of the Capcom 5, along with Killer 7, before they ported those games to the PS2. So, yeah. I... Capcom 5? Before I yeah. bought Tales and Symphonia... It was either Fire Emblem Path of Radiance or Tales of Symphonia that I've rented constantly. Hmm. Like, to the point I kind of wish that the people I kept renting the games from over and over were like, okay, this person is too obsessed with these two games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish they did that, but nope. Yeah. yeah. The Capcom 5, you're probably wondering what the Capcom 5 was, if you, if you all don't know, but do you guys know what the Capcom, Capcom 5? Capcom 5? Nope. Well, well, here's the thing. Nintendo had a deal with Capcom to release five of their games exclusively to the, to the GameCube. They were the Resident Evil Remake, Resident Evil Zero, Beautiful Joe, Killer Instincts, and Resident Evil 4. Mm-hmm. They were part of the part of the, of the Capcom Five at the time, before like before like they before like they finally ported some of them uh, some of the games over to like other consoles. Like we, we for the PS2, we got Killer Seven, we got Beautiful Joe and Resident Evil Four. But to get Resident Evil and Resident Evil, you know, remake Resident Evil Zero, we had to wait to like to play those on multiple cons on <clears throat> multi platforms. You had to wait to like when when they to like 2015 for that to happen. But still like um. I mean, like, you know, if you want to know about Beautiful Joe, just go check out my reviews on them, because I reviewed them before. I reviewed them in an earlier episode, but yeah. But we've already talked about the game you long enough. Now we're going to talk about the Xbox here. But do any of you have anything to say about the Xbox before? Because I know I know you guys didn't even play Xbox. Do you guys have anything to say about the Xbox at all? I have not touched the Xbox at all. The only game I'm aware of it is Halo and... I am not even remotely interested in Halo. Can I ask why you're not? Wait, actually, wait, how about you, Link? What, what do you have to say about the Xbox? I never really had an Xbox, like I said, until I got an Xbox One, like, a few years back. Okay. 
Well, I want I want to ask. I think you might be alone on the Xbox one. Well, I want to ask you, Sadat dear. What's the reason why you're never interested in the Xbox? I was wondering. It just never caught my attention. There was never any games that was like, pay me. Yeah, I mean, like I'm right now. Like my brother wanted to get an Xbox because Halo Two was out at the time, and Halo Two was like was like was like, like, like the quote unquote big game to get because of how great the graphics were and everything like that. So we got an Xbox for Christmas of of, of twenty uh, of twenty oh four. And, you know, at the time, I don't mind how the Xbox did have some good games. It had Dead or Alive 3, Dead or Alive Ultimate, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. Yes, I, I played Dead or Extreme Beach Volleyball, and I'm not going to lie there, I did like it. And I it had the original Halo, I liked Halo 1 better than Halo 2 and all that and stuff. And had KOTOR, and I started with Knights of the Republic, Knights of the Republic 2. I wasn't a big PC gamer, so I was the only way to play them. And it had some and it had Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, which was the only way to play that, aside from, like, Playing Jedi Outcast on my GameCube or the Xbox or so. But yeah, like, um, I did like the Xbox at first, because one cool thing was the custom soundtrack for certain games. You can, like, like for games like Dare Live and like Stream Beach Viable, if you didn't want to hear, hear the hear the same 20 songs over and over, you could put in your own custom soundtrack, and you could, and, and, and the music of that would play throughout the game. And I like that because the music got kind of the, the, the soccer and cute soundtrack got got old after a while and like I would like just like like put put like Nickelback or Hoobastank or Depeche Mode or Third of a Dead Man or like um some rock music in the game in the game and that'd be more fun to play and like um yes I know I'm, I'm not gonna be, be alone on this one 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 for the Xbox here because like I did own the Xbox but after a while, I realized that the Xbox was probably my least favorite console because just that all it did pretty much had to offer was good, good fancy graphics, and now it's basically it. I mean, sure, it had better looking, sure, their version of Grand Theft Auto 3 and Vice City and stuff looked better than the PS2, but still, it doesn't make the game better, per se. And, like, um, just, um, with Dirt Alive 3, you were gonna get that because, you know, it was a fighting game. You will be like, what else could you, uh, would you play except for Halo and stuff at the time? And like, just that, of course, like, like, um, people thought the Xbox was the best console that had the best graphics, but graphics don't make a good game. Graphics never made good consoles. It's the gameplay and stuff. I mean, sure, it had Ninja Gaiden, which, like, I have, it, then they gave Ninja Gaiden Black and all that stuff. But, you know, it's just really, like, just... Not nothing really to hold you over there. Of course, like there were some games I never had that I wanted to get Crazy Taxi 3, but that was just just like a compilation of the first two games just with like better graphics. So like, you really didn't really miss out much. But just that a lot of people preferred playing the first person shooters on the Xbox because of the way the the control scheme was set up and stuff. Because a lot of people didn't really like like the controls for a P for the PS2 for first person shooters, but I didn't think it was that bad. I didn't think it was that bad at all. But like. I'm sorry, I just didn't really care for the Xbox much. I mean, like, like um, the Xbox did have good games, but just that when the 360 came out, we stopped playing our Xbox altogether because, you know, there wasn't really much to it. I also had an awful port of CSI Crime Scene Investigation, which I got for my birthday one year, and uh, I don't want to talk about that shitty game. But, like, um, it's... Of course, I had, had Far Cry Instinct and Far Cry Instinct's Evolution, which, like, it was like like a retelling of Far Cry. I preferred for the original Far Cry better than that, so I didn't really care much there. And I didn't mention, I did not mention Guitar Hero on the PS, but, I, but that was uh, the top of another time. But, like, just the Xbox just didn't really, didn't really do it for me. You know, the only, the only a few games I liked for it. And they had some pretty bad games, too, like Advent Rising, which, which was, like, this, this this shitty sci-fi third-person game, which kind of was like a third-person Halo game with some the Xbox version has some terrible frame rate issues and glitches and stuff and freezing issues and all that stuff. So yeah, not my cup of tea. I mean, like it was either that, like the only good thing I say about the Xbox is that if you didn't, if you weren't a PC gamer, it had certain games that were on the Xbox that you could that that, that you could play if you didn't want a PC game, like Star Wars: Republic Commando. Um, Star Wars Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, just me, and like, um, just, um, and of course, also, people were hyped up for the Xbox version of Half-Life 2, 
I didn't care for Half-Life 2, I liked Half-Life 1 more, so, I didn't mention, I know that the PS2 version had, had a version of Half-Life 1, which I liked better than Half-Life 2, Half-Life 2 was just not that much fun for me, I am sorry, I mean, there was, a, there, was, there was somebody who made a video, I forget his name at the moment, why Half-Life 2 was a bad sequel, I agree with him 100%, my opinion is not gonna change there, and like, just... A lot of the games that that that, that are on the Xbox multi-platform wise you can play, I'm fine playing them on the PS2. I didn't have any problem with it, so that's just me. So Xbox was like in last place. It came out of nowhere, and of course it dominated because of the graphics and everything, but you know, I was happy with my PlayStation 2 and my GameCube. I mean, I don't have my GameCube anymore, but I still own my PS2, and you know, I'm proud to still have my PS2, definitely. And I know. And so, I'm still proud to have my GameCube. I wish I still had the GameCube, but you know, I don't have any room for it anymore and stuff like that. I know we didn't talk about the Sega Dreamcast or so, but you know, that like um, I didn't own a Sega Dreamcast, so I can't really say anything about it. And I don't, even, I don't, I don't know if Link or Sedet owned a Dreamcast, but you know, like what? I don't own one, but I think one of my cousins used to. A cousin of mine did well, did as well, but you know, like. But if I, I don't really have any experience with right. it. Right. Maybe, I don't know if Grim does, maybe Grim has some experience, but I just didn't want to talk about a system that I did not own. I mean, I owned Nintendo 64, I owned a PlayStation, I owned a GameCube, I owned an Xbox, I owned a PS2, I owned a PS3, I owned an Xbox 360, and I owned a Wii, and I owned a, a, a PS4, and I did know, I did play Xbox One at a friend's house, but still. What's the point of talking about a system that you never had, that you never owned in your life? But, um... Mm. Go ahead. Well, I can't think of one reason why you could talk about a system you never owned in your life. Hmm? The wish to play certain games that were exclusively on said system. Yeah, exactly. Like the Dreamcast, I'd like to play Soul, original Soul Calibur. I'd like to play the original version of Sonic Adventure 1 and 2. And check out Sonic Shuffle. And yeah, but still. Yeah, that's just me, though. But, um... I don't have anything else to say here. Do you guys have anything else to say before we end here? Well, all I can say to everybody is happy gaming. Happy gaming. Yeah, how about you, Lee? You got anything to say? Um, oh. nothing to really say at the moment. Okay. But, just, yeah, I never really had any Xbox memories myself. Oh. But, yeah, like, um... Right. That, the most I have is, like... I did have Blinks the Time Sweeper, but I kind of got bored of it pretty quickly. I never even heard of the game in my life, so... It yeah. was supposed to be... Was it so bad that you get bored of it because you're able to beat it in one day like this one Avatar game I've played for the GameCube? Um, no, actually, <laughs> no. Ah. Uh. It. I think it... I assume it's okay, but, like... For some reason, it never grabbed my attention like a lot of other games. Makes sense. It, it was supposed to be a kid mascot for the Xbox, but we all know how that turned out. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, they don't know how to make a game for kids, and, uh, that's for sure. And speaking of mascots, I did... My, my dad had Halo. I mean, not my dad. My, my dad's friend had Halo. And I played it for like a little bit. But I could not, I couldn't really see the appeal because I was just more focused on, you know, the stuff I was interested in at the time. Yeah. But like, um, yeah, I just didn't really care for the Xbox altogether, that's just what I'm saying there. Yeah. But I have nothing else to say, and I, I, and I, I know no one else has to say anything, so I'm just going to end it here. I'd like to thank Sedet and Link for once again, again joining us for this podcast here. We had a great time. I know Grim Monolith could not join us because he was having some issues with his network and his <laughs> internet issues, stuff like that, but he'll be back for next episode for sure. Pretty much all I gotta hopefully. say. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Keep it, but I'm sure everything will be fine. I said, here's a hoping. Yeah, hoping definitely. But okay. all we, which all you gotta say is Tony, Sedet, and Link peacing out and see you all in episode in the next episode where we're gonna talk about the PlayStation 3, the Xbox 360, and the Nintendo Wii. So, Wee! definitely. <laughs> Definitely. We'll be on the lookout for that, so I'll see you all later, y'all. Have a great day.